But you know what? She said, I'm going to do what the Bible says. You said you're not going to do what the Bible says. Okay. You're, so you are going to do it. You're not going to do it right now. But the prophecy is coming out right now. It said praying or prophesying. That's what we read. You got. Give me revelations. Let me show you. First Corinthians 11 and 1. He said uh, something about role reversal, right? So y'all in a relationship, right? You got a girlfriend? Wife. Yeah, wife. Good, good, good. So who's the head of your household? Me. You, right? Does the Bible say for that to be so? Are you, who's the head over here? Who's the head over here, sir? So you said it's you. She just playing. She just playing? Who's the head, sir? What's your name? When it comes down to certain situations, we both are the head of the household. You okay. both are the head of the household. To me, we both are the head of the household. To you, okay. There's females in the house. I have a say so about what the females do in my house. Okay. If men in the house, we have a say so with men. Of the men in the house, it don't matter. Men, both Sound like y'all ain't speaking the same thing right now. I hear what you're saying, sis. He said that the females in the house, you have a say over the females. Uh, the brother said, I'm just the head of everything. No, that's just to respect her word if she has a say so. Respect her word if she has a say yeah. so. So she says, hey, I don't want the drapes to be purple. I want them to be black. Right. Then you're going to say, yes, ma'am. Nah, nah. nah. What do you say? Depends, depends like the color. I don't think she see it. Yo, I want to see what she says. I want to interrupt the drinks you. Drinks are purple, and I want them black. They're going to be black. I okay, so we have a fundamental difference here. She thinks she's running it. You think you're running it. What does God say that happened? We got. That's why we got to have the Bible. In marriage, we got to have the Bible. We got to see what God thinks. What we think don't matter. Give me that. First Corinthians. As long as we put them first. That's what the scriptures want to talk about, putting God first. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. This is Paul speaking. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. Read. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So, Paul said the head of every man is who? Christ. Christ. So Christ is your head. So what Christ say, that's what we do. Christ said keep the commandments. Therefore, we Israelites keep the commandments. Bring it up. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who? Is the man. Is Jesus. Is the man. Is God. Is the man. So the woman's head is who, sis? Is the man. That's right. right. And the head of Christ is God. So Christ ain't equal to God. Christ comes under God. So what's the order? Who's at the top? Christ, God, man, Christ, man, woman. Then children. Come on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. So look at that. You showing you how the commandment. He said, every man that prays or prophesies, meaning you hear the prophecy of these scriptures, you dishonor your head. Who's your head? God. Are you dishonoring your head? It's not God, it's Christ. Are you dishonoring Christ right now? Yeah. You are how? I'm going to cover my head. Yeah. So what should you do? You in that brother right there that slid up here. You should uncover your head. Well, that's right. so I'll just give you some time. I'm not, though. I'm not. You're not? Why not? So, okay, keep reading. So he said he's not. So watch this. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, this out of her head. So if you were praying to God, or if you were hearing the prophecy of the scriptures, what should you do? The scripture's talking to you. I'm going by the scripture, yeah. and whenever I pray, I should, I should be basically as far as my head covering, like basically. As far as your head covering, yeah. So you should have a covering on your head, right? As far as like how um, Muslims that live out of the Quran. Okay, the Muslims got it from the Bible. The Quran is nothing but a recitation of the Bible. Right, right. That came after Jesus. Right. Hundreds of years after Jesus, they came with that religion. It's not their custom. They stole our custom. Right. And we don't follow our custom. So it looks like they came up with it. Right. No. The Bible says for the Israelites, the blacks and the spanks, to cover their head, the women, when they pray and prophesy. So right. are you right. going to do that from now on? Yeah. Yes. So there's a difference. You know what? She said, I'm going to do what the Bible says. You said you're not going to do what the Bible says. Okay. You, so you are going to do it. Yeah. I'm, you asked me, you said, I'm going to wait. I'm like, I'm not going to do it right now. You're not going to do it right now. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not praying right now. Yeah, but the prophecy is coming out right now. Yeah. He said praying or prophesying. That's what we read. You got. Give me revelations. I'm going to show you. What we're listening to right now is prophecy. Maybe Paul is speaking through Christ. Remember he said, um, remember what he said, verse 1? Read verse 1 again. Verse 11, verse 1. Be followers of me, 
even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. He's delivering the ordinances of God. So you may, and he's speaking to you. He said, follow me like I'm following Christ right now. Now read that. Revelation. You know what I want? Watch this. What is prophecy? Read. Revelation. Chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. And the testimony of Jesus. Come on. Worship God. But the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What's the testimony? The words of Christ? Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. It is the spirit of prophecy. So that's what you're hearing. So we are prophesying unto y'all. Y'all receiving the prophecy. So according to that, these brothers out here, like my brother right there, older brother, older man, older gentleman. According to the Bible, go back to Revelation, uh, I got First Corinthians. 11 verse 4. Every man pray or prophesy. Every man that prays or prophesy. Having his head covered. Dishonor of his head. So the Bible says when your head is covered, you're dishonoring Jesus Christ. While the spirit of the Bible's coming out. Or while you're praying. Looks like he's doing both. So, what should you do, older brother? He's not with us. He's with us? He's here. So, since you're with, you're with me right now, what does the Bible say to do? You shouldn't cover your head. So, that starts, you should start keeping the commandments immediately. Now, I'm not telling you doing it for me. What? So you're going to wait later and do it. No, I'm just, I'm not, I'm here. Job, yeah. But I'm not fully committed yet. Not fully committed yet. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know why that's, um, it's not a problem for your salvation yet. Yeah. Give me Psalms 119, 159. Because you heard the order and structure, right? You're down with the order and structure. When do you want that to start? Like you being ahead and then she's under you. When do you want that to start? We gotta work on our personal issues You gotta work on your personal issues. So you're gonna give it about a year, two uh, years? No time limit on it. No time limit on it. Just whenever. That's not whenever either. We're gonna work on it. Come as we Okay, I'm gonna ask her. What do you think about it? So you heard what the Bible says, right? Do you love God? You do. I'm gonna say that I do technically in my own just like Dr. saying before, that come down to church, they're not really telling you. Okay, so the church has been giving you false prophecy, that's why you're finding your way. So what church you go to? Like a Baptist church? I'm not in a church. You're not in a church. But just what you've been taught. Okay. Watch it. So what does it mean to love God? To basically love yourself and love your people. Love yourself, love your people? What do you say, bro? Respect and honor. Respect and honor God? How do you how do you how you show them love, respect, honor? How do you show it to them? Huh? Following his teaching. Following his teaching, what do you say? He said, "Keep his commandments." Let's see what the Bible says. Bring it From John chapter five, verse three. Bring this is the love of God in New Testament. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. So you love God when you keep His commandments or ordinances, like Paul said. Paul said, "Follow these ordinances." Paul said, "When the scriptures come out, uncover your head. Or if you're a woman, cover your head. If you love God, what would you do? You follow what you follow what He said. Come on, and His commandments." are not grievous and the commandments are not hard right that's the simplest flip or a flip up that's easy one of the commandments is like uh the brother brought out earlier with the dress right is it hard or difficult for you to put on a dress no that's easy is it hard or difficult for you brother to not wear a dress super easy so why are we stumbling some of these commandments and not others because we, we, we let our, we let our, I'm trying to think of the word, we let our lust for the world or worldly things take over. Well said, you said the, we let our lust for the world or worldly things take over. That's heavy right there. Give me James 4. And 4. God hates us if we celebrate with the world, right? You said God hates us if we celebrate with the world? Yeah, if we, if we want to be one with the world, that's how God's going to deal with us. We're going to die with the rest of the world. Right, right. That we, that's what's going to happen. Hold that. Give me Romans 6, 23. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to prove it to you. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Bring it up! Bring it up! Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Huh? For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. What is sin? Oh, I want to get the train. What he said. You say it again? Going against what's commanded. So if you never uncover your head, what are you in? Uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> 
I ain't say go to hell, bro. I ain't nobody say go to hell. What did the scripture say? The wages of sin is death. I said die. Now, I know people think about white people, you know, what they taught us hell was, so-called white people, something, some big hairy man underground with a pitchfork, no such thing as that. De death is coming on earth. Gotta keep, gotta bring a bus. You understand what I'm saying? Something just fall out the sky. You just get sick one day. That's how, that's death. You understand? It's not about, oh, you're going to go down under, you know, under the chambers of uh, the earth. So read one more time. The, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it's life or death. You live or you die. So if you sin, what's going to happen to you? If you just continue in sin forever. You're going to die. So what should you choose? What you got? You should, choose, you should choose life, right? How do you get life? How do you get eternal life? You Matthew 19. How do you get the eternal life? Follow, follow Christ and his commandments. Follow Christ and his commandments? What, what say you? You say the same thing. Are you fully convinced of that, though? Do you really believe Christ told us to keep these commandments? Did Christ just tell us to lead the best life we can? I believe that. Which one? Follow the commandments. Do you believe that, sir? You gotta sir? have structure and order. You gotta have something to follow. Right. Okay, let's see. Matthew 19. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, what came and said to him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? That is none good but one. That is God. So again, Christ saying, I'm not on the level with God. Come on. But if thou will enter into life. Christ said, if you want eternal life, if you want to get the kingdom of heaven. Read. Keep the commandments. You have to keep God's commandments. So this takes me away from eternal life. No, I got a tattoo as well. Okay. How raise your hand if you got a tattoo? But it's, it's not about that. Give me Leviticus 21 to 5. Huh? We should cut our body. Meaning tattoos and all that. Right, it's Leviticus 19. Now I'm going to read that and I'm going to explain to you what's going on. Leviticus 19. So let's prove it. Let's prove that tattoos are wrong. And then we're going to show you how we apply that commandment to get salvation. Give me that. Leviticus 19, verse 20, 28. Ye shall not make any cutting in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Or do what? Print any marks upon you. That's tattoos. Printing a mark, applying pressure, sticking something in you, making mark. That's tattoos. So we heard that commandment, right? Give me Titus 3 and 3. We heard that commandment. I got a tattoo on my chest. So now that I've heard the law, am I going to get my, my back done? Am I going to finish the chest tattoo? Get them removed. Now, it ain't about getting removed. I mean, it's already on you. No matter what you're going to do, you're going to just scar yourself up. It's still there. What that go against the law? So what should we do? Basically, what you're saying is even though we already did it, since we're learning it, that's where we stop it. Right. You understand that? What you said? Yeah, well, you know, we've done that. Yeah. Now that we learn, now we stop. Now we do better. Right. You do not get more tattoos. Like, dang. Watch it. And the scripture's going to say it. Titus 3, 3 and 3. Titus okay. chapter 3, verse 3. But we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Because we ourselves were sometimes foolish. We did those things. Come on. Disobedient. Disobedient. Hard-headed against God. God said, do something. We said, nah. I'm going to do something different. Deceived. Uh-huh. Uh, some in diverse lust and pleasure. That's what the brother said earlier. We serve diverse, diverse lust and pleasures. Some pleasures are like sex. It's like, well, I know I'm supposed to marry a sister if, you know, I have sex. Well, I'm supposed to eventually get some uh, marriage papers. Uh, I like having sex with a lot of women. I may want to have sex with a different woman later. I may want to have sex with two women at the same time. So I'm not going to marry her. I want to do my own thing. Or you might have a lust for cigarettes, weed, all that's unlawful. And you let that come between you and God. But the scripture says we were sometimes like that. We used to be like that. Come on. Living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That's the spirits on blacks and Hispanics today. We live in malice. That's maliciousness, meaning evil and envy. We jealous of everybody. Why? Because we're stuck in our own lust and we're disobedient to God. That's right. right. That's why. And we refuse yeah. to turn back to the straight path. There's one path to lead. No, you can't get uh, tattoos. No, you can't smoke cigarettes. Right. No, you can't smoke weed. Right. No, you can't eat pork. Right. No, you can't treat women like whores. Right. You have one path. To, you, one path. The path of an Israelite man. The path of a god. That's what you got. Right. That's right. And the woman has the path of a princess. But if you do anything outside of that, that's death. That's what God says. Right. Hold on, we gonna finish. Right. That was it. One four, one four. That's it. What's your question? You understand that? What you got? Okay, I'm not I'm not being petty, but um Yeah, being petty coin. Um but I was just like You say you say come on, let me, let me finish the statement. 
No, I was saying so we we follow the things of the law, but if I'm not mistaken, that's why I say I don't want to be credit, but I'm just it just dawned on me. Okay. God said don't make anything of the earth. You get know what I'm saying? Like uh like the trees or uh, uh, like the animals or anything, but I was saying like there's lions on your ring, right? Yeah, you got a lot of lines. Well, wouldn't that be like a, I mean, I know that Christ is the line. So you saying? Judas, right? I know what you're talking. You talking about the commandment, right? Yeah. So, so I'm. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, just, I'm asking. So would that consist of? You know what I'm saying? Because I yeah. want. Because I'm, I'm only asking because I I went to the mall and I was going to give you a, a lion like necklace or whatever. Yeah. But then I was and then my wife told me she was like, "What about the scripture where you said don't make anything like of the earth or whatever?" And that's why I didn't get it. Okay. So that's, that's a good question. Good question. You understand this question? Your brother got lions because it said the Bible says don't make any. Give me that in uh, Exodus 20. Verse. You got it? Yeah. Exodus chapter 20. Yeah, 3. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the waters under the earth. So that's anything above the heaven, under the earth, or the waters under the heaven, under the earth. Okay. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. That's the difference. Thou shalt not do what? Bow down thyself to them. You see this fellow right here? Remember, we, he was going over Caesar Borgia earlier. What do we do when we see that? What's the custom? What do we do? Bow down. We bow down to it. To and we pray to it. And we talk to it. Like it's going to talk back. And it don't talk back. He's not doing that with those little necklaces okay, and those, so uh, rings. So I, uh, so I would be perfectly fine with the You're perfectly thing. fine. Now, okay. if you drop down and start praying to something, right. you of the devil. You, you worshiping that God. You know another way you worship gods? <coughs> Give me uh, 1 Samuel 15. 1 Kings 10, 16 through 20, go into the church. Okay. <laughs> I got you. We get that. 1 Kings, you know, rebellion. 15. I'm going to show you another way you worship another God. Other than dropping to your knees and praying to him. Yeah, you know what? Verse 23. 3. For rebellion. Number that one. Yeah. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yo, what's rebellion? Going against, going against God. Going against something. Going against God. So what did we read again? For rebellion. So being rebellious against God. God say something and you I don't really feel like doing it. Read. Is as the sin of witchcraft. It's just like witchcraft. Like you draw a hexagon or whatever they make. You sacrifice a goat or something, or uh, sacrifice a cat or something, making spells. It says just like witchcraft, if you're rebellious to God. What does a witch do in the Old Testament? What do they do to witches? They used to bring up the dead. What I mean, oh, you said what? What, what was the punishment for being a oh, witch? What was the punishment? Burn fire, on fire, right? They crucified. They lit them on fire. It says suffer not a witch to live. Come on. For rebellious as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness and being stubborn, meaning you keep repeatedly getting told something. You're like, I don't really do it. I don't want to do it. I want to do it. Being stubborn is what? It's as the iniquity and idolatry. It's like what? It's as iniquity and idolatry. Being stubborn against the word of God is like iniquity, sin, and idolatry, worshiping That's another right. God. Right. If you are rebellious and stubborn against what the law says, for example, uncovering your head while the scriptures is coming out. Right. Then you be, are you saying I'm petty? Yeah. You're being petty against God. The more stubborn you are against what God says, he says that's like you worshiping another God. Because if you, he's your father, right? We got father. Matter of fact, let's take it to a carnal level. You go to a courthouse, right? When you go to the courthouse, what does the judge say? If you go in there with your, uh, your fitting on, what do you say? Take your hat off. What do you do? You take that damn hat off. Say you don't. Do you take the hat off? You best you do. But you do, don't you? Because the white man's God, ain't he? Then why? Does you still have that on your head? If the white man's not God, you do it for God. But you won't do it when the Bible says it. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, how many of y'all got, uh, how many of y'all cold? Raise your hand if you cold out here. But all these brothers is cold without their head covered. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's one. It's cold. Two, I'm not everybody else out here. You say you're not everybody else out here? Three. Okay. I'm learning something right now. Yes, sir. I'm not, I'm not just step up here and then instantly, okay, I see all this, this is it. I believe it because I don't I understand. I, I don't follow Christianity. I, I believe this more. No praise, no praise. But I'm not just going to step up here and then instantly, oh, I'm committed to everything I'm going to learn right now. Right. I do believe it. I got you. No. Right. So you just need time to stay, is what you're saying. That's fine. That's fine. You can take your time to stay. But make haste, though. Make haste to stay. You got the flyer, right? Yeah, I do. On the back of the flyer. Free website. We ain't asking you for no money or nothing. And we're not asking you to join an organization. Huh? 
Yeah, get that. I'm sorry. I never got it. Let's get this. I'm going to show you a scripture. Psalm chapter 119, verse 59. I thought on my ways, and I turned my feet unto thy testimonies. So David said, I thought on what my what I was doing. I said, dang, I'm wicked. David was very wicked. Y'all know the Bible? Yeah. David did some wicked yeah. things. He had a man yeah. killed and slept with his wife. I, gotta, I had to think about that evil thing I did. I made haste. What did he do? I made haste. And delayed not to keep thy commandments. He said, I made haste and delayed not to keep the commandments of God. So he said, man, I, I'm, I, that was evil what I did. I mur had a man murdered, and I committed adultery, and other things. And I made haste to not do that again. He said, I made haste to keep the commandments. So you got your time. But, you know, that's grace, the fact that you alive right now. You got a lot of time. Huh? You got a lot of time. You ain't got a lot of time. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. This should make 400 years, right? 1619. Oh, we don't go by that. Oh. You know, I know a lot of people, a lot of fans are like 400 years. They're going to be very disappointed. Because, like, right here, you go through, imagine you go through this whole year right now. Uh, and nothing happened. And you oh, don't, no, no, you no, never no, believe in believe, nothing no more. I don't, I don't believe, I don't, I don't believe, I don't. You don't believe that? No, I don't believe that, but I, I would just don't. Remember the scripture says, no man know the hour. Okay. No man, no man know the hour. So we don't know one. That's how we operate. We know when we have 144 sealed in the laws of God. That's right. That's the, that's the sign we have. That's right. 144 sealed, keeping the laws of God. That's what we need of each of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. 100, or 12,000 of each tribe. You got me? Book of, 11. Yep. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. That's why black people operate. The Bible says because sentence, because let's go back to the courtroom. What's a sentence? A time. A time. It's a judgment. Yeah. It's like if you do a crime, you murder somebody, what's your sentence? 20, you get 20, 25, life? So it says, because what? Because sentence. Because the judgment, the punishment, what? Against an evil work. Against your sin. is not executed speedily. Because you ain't get punished for the evil thing you do immediately. Because you still walk around alive. We? Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's the mind of the black man. Because you ain't been punished for the evil thing you just did, you fully set to do evil. It's like, I'm good. God would have killed me by now if I was doing something evil. He would have already judged me. I, my head covered, I mean, I'm fine right now. Give me Romans 6. And I, I'm not, I know I'm getting on, because I see you, you study. I want you to repent, keep God's commandments. And that's what I want. That's what I want for all our people. Right. The sooner you do it, the sooner we get out of here. We don't have to wait around and count up years. When 444,000 keep the commandments, then we can leave. So I'm trying to haste. I was like, come on, brothers. If y'all believe, keep the commandments so we can get out of here. We can rule the world. That's what we're going to that's what, That's what's waiting for you. Don't you want to rule the world? I'm sick of these people running stuff. Donald Trump and them. And whoever comes later, Hillary, whoever comes later, all them snakes, they're going to be under our foot. They're going to do everything we command them to do. And every everything they ever done to us, they're going to pay for double, according to the Bible. That's right. Got me? Uh, give me revelations. Let me show them. Yeah, that'll work. Bring it out. Second like Peter chapter three verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So it's gonna come quick. The day of the Lord. You heard that in church? Gonna come like a thief in the night. You know what it means? You're not gonna see it coming. You're not gonna be sitting there with a little count on your cell phone, a little app countdown to the end of the world. It don't work like that. It could be tonight. Y'all been watching the news? Yeah. You watch the news? I do. Scripture says watch and pray. All this war. This this unstable man that's ruling over America right now, Russia, all that stuff. What you say? You say he about to get <laughs> he okay. She said he about to get impeached. You can wait around that if you want to. They've been saying that since he got elected. But even if he does get impeached, whoever comes next is worse. Remember, the vice president is worse than him. But didn't the Bible say that Trump? And then Putin's worse than them, huh? Didn't the Bible say well, from what I read, um, when he was saying well, wow, that's crazy. Okay, when he said at the last Trump. The trumpet shall be blown, but all right, you not, not, not the word Trump. Don't look. No, but I'm saying from when I read <laughs> the Bible, from when I read the Bible from beginning to end, I never, I never seen the word Trump, Old or New Testament. So it's like, so what is he talking about right there? I'm not, I'm not saying he's talking about a trumpet. He's not, he's not talking yeah, about a man. No, but I'm saying he said. Let, let me finish this. Okay. You gonna see more about it. He ain't talking about a man. That Trump ain't talking about the actual Trump. Okay. Come on. But the day of the Lord come as a thief in the night, and the and the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. That great noise is boom. Nuclear destruction. That's where the great noise is. And the elements shall melt with the fervent heat. The elements gonna melt with fervent heat. Mean everything's gonna burn us here. Read the earth also, 
and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That nuclear fire is going to devour this whole place. People talking about, who are you to judge me? They're going to be on fire too. Read. Sin, sin then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to do in all holy conversations and godliness? So it says, say all these things are going to come to pass. Everybody knows it's going to be in World War III. Everybody knows destruction is going to come before Christ comes. It's going to come with Christ. What kind of person are you to be? Should you be rebellious? No. Should you be stubborn? No. Or should you be cleaving to this Bible? Please. Not to my words, but to what the Bible says. I'm just here to bring the sense to this. Because y'all ain't been taught nothing. This whole time in America, we weren't allowed to read. We had to play catch up. So now that we understand the Bible, we're out here pushing this Bible on y'all. We're pushing drugs. Right. Push this Bible. Keep these commandments. Right. We're right. pushing these laws on you. Right. So we have a, a greater salvation. The salvation, what does it mean to be saved? Don't y'all want to be saved? Are you saved now? Are you saved, sanctified? Some people might be. They say, who are you to judge me? I'm not judging. God's going to bring the judgment. But I'm going to look at your life and show you where in the Bible you're going off. People consider that judgment. Judgment is condemnation. We ain't, con we ain't con uh, condemning anybody out here. We can't condemn you. But we can we warn you, if you don't change your ways, you're going to die. What you got? Give me a revelation. 13. Yeah. Nine. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. So if God is real, what is a just judgment for all the things that we've taken on as a people, blacks and Hispanics? Bring it up. The Israelites. We were put in slavery, right? We were oppressed. We To this day, is this the racism? Yeah. Absolutely. And then people go, it's 2019. Was well, this the racism? Ain't ne it never stopped. That's considered racism, right? Because what is CSL plasma. Because yeah, CSL plasma. That's racism. Well, us ain't nothing but blacks and Hispanics going up in there, giving their blood. You know, when y'all die secretly, people get murdered, then you find you stuff with newspaper. They're taking your organs, too. But they're getting your blood for free right there, keeping you alive. Some of them just kill you, take your organs. They go to somebody rich, uh, eat them like someone. Come on, read again. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. The Bible says, whoever leads people into captivity, into slavery, shall do what? Go into captivity. That means going to go into captivity. Who's that talking about? You say white people. What do you say? All the other nations. You said all the other nations. Well, majority all of them. Well, I think all of them. I don't know all the Every them. nation had us in slavery. Yeah, so every that. nation has to pay for what they did. Right, right. Thus saith the Lord. Right. What do you say, sis? You're not sure? Read again. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword. You know how many black people died in the transatlantic slave trade? Million. 100 million. 100 million. There's so many people that died that the sharks changed their natural course in the ocean to fall to slave ships. Right, right. How many people is that? That's a lot. That the sharks said, nah, we're going to fall. It. Man, there's guaranteed food coming off these ships. How many Native Americans died when the so-called white man turned his back on every treaty he signed with them? 50 plus million, right? 77 million Native Americans yeah, and Hispanics. That's the ones that counted. So it's more than that. The courthouses, your churches are built on the bones of your forefathers and the Hispanics and the Native Americans. So they got to pay for it. According to God. Right. If God is real, right. he says it's a just judgment for him. Because Come on. Right? He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. God says everyone that killed with war must be killed with war. Read. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Go to Luke 1 and 68. He said, here's the patience and faith of the saints. He's saying that is a good thing. That is something to look for and hope for. That's something to be patient for. When that tribulation is turned on them and that we're ruling the earth again. We went into slavery. Why? Because of our sins. Because we didn't want to keep the Sabbath. Because we didn't want to, uh, a woman didn't want to dress like a woman. She wanted to dress like a man. A man wanted to dress like a woman. Females today. They, they want to dress like women. You see that everywhere. You see that in Durham. It ain't just Atlanta. You ain't just Charlotte. It's here in the world. It's here in Durham. So they twisted. The whole world is twisted. So with that being said, that being basically women supposed to always wear dresses? You said, so should women always wear dresses? Is God always looking? Yes. Should, well, there's your answer. If God is watching, you should be wearing what he said to wear. Right, you can, right. Hold that Zephaniah 1 and 8. I'm going to show you why. So even if it's cold, you're still supposed to wear a dress? Yeah, you can wear leggings underneath your dress. You can wear leggings underneath your dress. But no one should see your shape and form. If that right. man is going to marry you, if he really loves you, and you're not a jump off a side piece, and he lay down and, mar and he marry you, do you want everybody to see your, your wife's nakedness? Should I see your wife behind? 
Or the next man, that's that's what's going on. So right. let's not be foolish. Like, nah, you got to cover up. That's you his possession. Right. right. You his possession, right? You his real. Come on. That's not one in it. Now, back to your question. Should you wear it all the time? Is there a judgment for wearing something that you shouldn't wear? Sisters yeah. across the street. Is there a judgment if you're wearing the clothes that pertain to a man? Let's see in the Bible. Bring it out. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. On. And it shall come to pass, and the day of the Lord sacrifice, that will punish the princes and the king's children. You say, I'm going to punish the princes and king's children. Read. And all set and what? And all set. The Bible says, and everybody. And everybody. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. And everybody that's got on strange clothing. Every woman that's wearing pants. God said, what did he say? Read from the top. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is World War III. That's when Christ returns. And he's going to kill a lot of people. Christ is. Not the devil. Jesus is. Christ, God. And that I will punish the... Christ said he's going to what? Punish. He said, I will punish. Read the princess. And the king's children, and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. I'm killing everybody that's dressed out of order. That's what the Bible says. So guess what? You should. Do you know what day Christ is coming back? You never know. So what? How often should you wear a dress? Every day. Every day. Every day. Exactly. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.